What is up, all you rod benders and paint slingers? Daniel with Bent Rod, another video. Today we are going to be mimicking that, the American Shad. When I say mimicking, I mean loosely mimicking. We're using it as inspiration. Like, subscribe, all that jazz. We'll be using opaque white for a base, candy 2.0 carob blue. Candy 2.0 Poison Green and Opaque Black. Start off by, as normal, just putting a base of opaque white down to give us something to paint upon. Now, as if you look, as you can see, I have rubber bands in both of those joints you can kind of see them poking out there and i have taped off the tail dorsal anal and pectoral fins of this fish i want to keep them clear um i'm going to uh paint them with the candy paints at the end so they are clear as opposed to the opaque of the fish i think it's going to make it look cool This is a six inch long, uh, it, it is called a bass swim bait on Barlow's website. Uh, six inch bass swim bait, I believe is what it was called. I definitely plan on painting another one to look like a bass. Um, and I thought we would start off with a shad pattern. As always, you want to use light coats um, and then just a lot of them. Helps you keep control. Um, keeps it from everything from getting too wet, if you will. for our scaling I've used these before in another video it's my favorite way um, when you have a relatively large flat fish this is my favorite way of getting the your scaling um, material tight up against your your lure um, so yeah it's just uh, I think I picked the ring those two wooden rings up but those are I think they're meant for cross stitching um, pretty sure that's correct um, they're super cheap you can get them at Walmart Hobby Lobby anything anywhere that has any kind of an arts and crafts section um, will have this stuff more than likely um, and then you just find your scaling material that you want to use and install that instead of the cross stitching material in there and go to your hardware store get you some magnets like this and you're good now I will uh, tell you if you haven't already done this <clears throat> I have seen people with like rectangular magnets and I would um, I plan on going to buy some actually um, now this lure is so contoured curvy there's fins and stuff sticking out all over the place probably wouldn't have used them here but a lot of the lures that I use um, have much like longer straight edges on them and those rectangular magnets would hold the fabric uh, a larger portion of the fabric tight against your lure if that makes sense because they're not just little circles they're like you know two or three inches long it, it's just better um, 
I don't remember who I saw on YouTube. If I can think of it before the video is over, I will uh, give them a shout out here. But I saw that and thought, man, that's way better than those <laughs> those little uh, circle magnets I have. Um, listen, these do a fine job, but um, uh, on certain lures, it would benefit to have those longer rectangular magnets. So if you haven't already gone out and bought stuff like this, um, and you're going to try this, uh, I would suggest getting a variety of uh, shapes and sizes for your magnets. And as always, the key is just trying to make as much of that um, fabric lay tight against your lure. You want that fabric to be completely laying against the lure. No gaps between the lure and the fabric. Um, and you're going to have a much better result if you do that. snug the magnets up against it once you get all once you get them all on there you know you're not locked in if you get all your magnets on and you're like oh there's a gap over here you know slide them around push them up um, nudge them up against the lure that'll help tighten it up um, and then as you see me doing there look at look check it out make sure it's all tight now here I forgot to hit record on one pass um, that is poison green Candy 2.0 Poison Green, which as you can see comes out way more yellow than green, um, and that's kind of why I used it. Um, if you wanted to do this with a more green green, you could go Emerald Green um, for the Candy 2.0, uh, but it is going to be a much darker green. Now I apply the Poison Green um, to the spine, shoulders as you see there, a little bit on the face, gills. Um, and then a little bit kind of up on the belly. Um, and I'm going to come back, as you're going to see here in a moment, with the care of blue. Most of that up top is going to be actually covered with the care of blue. Um, but there is some yellow at the top, um, just under the blue, and you always want to put your lighter color down first. So put down your yellowish green here. Um, and then come back over with blue. The blue will cover the yellowish green as much as you want it to, but then you will have some showing sticking out underneath. Um, that's gonna look pretty good. Right now, I know it looks so weird. <laughs> it doesn't come together yet until the blue comes into play. And obviously spraying a transparent blue paint on top of a yellow is going to make it look green, but we will saturate it. And uh, actually, I'm going to show you a trick um, here momentarily. And then just spray a little bit on the white there because you want that to be blue. There you go. And now you can see the difference. <laughs> saturating it up around the spine and shoulders there and it'll just keep getting darker and darker Now here I spray a little bit of blue on the belly. <clears throat> um, you can skip this if you want the belly to be white. Um, it would add to a little bit more realism. I just love the play of those yellow, green, and blues together, and I just thought it would make the lure look better overall. Um, and I did heat set in that little fade there. So you definitely want to heat set this before you start removing magnets and whatnot. Make sure everything's dry because this lure is going to shift um, as you take these magnets off and it 
will cause your scaling to smear and not be crisp and clean. And you won't get the oohs and the ahs. <laughs> Crisp, clean lines. Nothing's blurry, nothing's fuzzy. That's one of the best scaling jobs I think I've ever done, actually. Without <laughs> being real, um, they, that came out pretty, pretty well. Back in the helping hands, and on to the next. We are going to hit that spine up. Now you can see there's a spot there on the tail where the the netting, I guess, the scaling fabric wasn't. And you can see up there on the head, there's a spot. That is okay. Um, I am just making everything as close to the same color as I can at this point. We are actually going to load the brush back up with opaque white and repaint the face, gill plate, and spine and belly actually white so that all this scaling uh, fades in and out it'll it'll look a little more natural and again let me stress this is not a natural <laughs> this is not a realistic looking uh, bait I was really just trying to have a play on the classic uh, sexy shad pattern um, and noticed those colors in an American shad which I'm assuming is what the sexy shad pattern was probably based off of um, so I just decided to have some fun with it and that is opaque white going back on the belly there and then you can see it causes that little fade and we'll be taking advantage of that fade on the top um, face and gill plate as you can see here now this actually took more coats um, than I recorded I didn't see the point in making you watch me put 25 coats of white on the face of this fish you get it paint the face of the fish white <laughs> um, and keep doing it until you get your desired um, color I guess if you will I do apologize for my hand in the face of the camera there um, I am <laughs> on a never-ending quest to find the right camera set up here I think this is best when it comes to angles and it being close um, but man it's hard <laughs> it's hard to airbrush uh, with a camera literally between your chest and the lure um, I, I'm, actually it's more like between my face and the lure I'm constantly looking over or under and to the side and it it's difficult <laughs> um, so I apologize for that I, I try to be conscious of it and then every now and then I just my focus is completely on what I'm doing um, on the lure and I'm not looking at the fact that my hand is in your face so please uh, forgive me for that I will work on that um, so as I said here we go um, opaque white on the spine and shoulders here um, and I know that that looks really weird right now but um, we're going to go back over this white with caribou blue again and um, then you'll see how it all just kind of comes together at that point and don't be afraid to get some overspray off the gills as you can see that I like just passed the gill plate on the lure that's um, white but here we go this is what brings it all in and you just reload care of blue candy 2.0 back in your brush and then anything you just went white over except for the belly I decided I wanted the belly white to just fade up and have a little bit of blue which it is there but now everything you just did this just kind of softens it all now when you're going back over that face and gill plate if you want um, you can use a paintbrush and brush it on you'll get it on thicker and faster if you don't want to sit and just continue to go layer after layer layer heat set layer heat set layer heat set it was obnoxious I'm gonna be honest with you that's why I didn't that's why I quit recording it I probably did about six or seven times before I got it how I wanted it 
The blue still showed through a little bit, but having a little bit of scaling come through on the face and gill plate isn't a bad thing in my opinion, honestly. Um, it, I, I got it to the level that I was happy with. If you want it to be completely white, then just keep going until it is. You can, it just takes a lot of passes. And now I've pulled the tape off the fins. Um, so on the tail fin there, we're just hitting the tips with the carob blue. And the, what is that? That's the dorsal. Dorsal fin, again, the top and tip, just with the carob blue. And then heat set that. Um, and then you'll see the next phase coming up. But definitely heat set. You don't want to spray wet candy 2.0 on wet candy 2.0. They will combine. Um, and then you won't have two colors. You'll have one. So heat set and then come back in with your poison green. And I just put some accents on the face to make it a little bit more interesting there with the poison green. And then you want to hit your, uh, sorry guys, <laughs> your back of the hand. Um, I get a little bit there, yeah, on the bottom of the gills. That paper that I showed you in the beginning, I have up in my booth. I'm looking at it um, for reference as to where to put the poison green. Now you want to shoot the poison green under the carob blue on that fin, and just they'll and it kind of fades up as you see there, and it looks really good. I think I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I thought that looked really good. Um, and then as you can see, I've done the anal fin there, doing the pectoral fins now. And I do decide to put some at the base of that tail fin there, here momentarily. we're done. I think we're just adding eyes at this point. Yep. So if I had an eye like this, the same pupil, but instead of it being kind of an orangish brown iris, um, it being like a yellow iris, I would have gone there. If you have an eye um, that is more yellow um, with a normal pupil, I think that would look better in this. I didn't, I went through all of the five billion eyes I have and I did not have the eye I was looking for. I didn't even think that was possible anymore, but um, I still like it. I think it looks really good, but I think if you had a yellow eye in there, the whole thing would pop even more, so. Be very interested to see. <clears throat> if anybody paints this and has that eye, post it, tag me in it. Um, send us a picture, I'd love to see it. Oh, forgot about the shad dots <laughs> so airbrushing wise we are done now that if you've never seen that before that is for nail art like like fingernails uh, my wife uh, is in the industry and she is a hairstylist and was trained to do nails and stuff as well and she got that for me when I started painting lures showed me what it was for and they're awesome <laughs> now I kind of used them to kind of draw as you saw there I was kind of going and a bigger circle because I needed it to be a bigger dot but there's a there there's a fat fat end and then a skinny end and if you just need just a perfectly little round dot those things are they're great I love them
Now we're just gonna repeat on the other side. I try to line them up as well as I can, but honestly, it's not that big of a deal. Nobody's gonna be looking at both sides of the lures at one time to see that they're off by an eighth of an inch. I wouldn't stress it too much. guys yeah if you if you enjoy these videos um, subscribe like turn notifications on all that stuff it would mean a lot um, to a, a growing youtuber and that is pretty much gonna do it I think I'm just gonna uh, leave you guys to enjoy the finished product Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, stay bent.